Again, going into Louisville week, uh, obviously it's a really good team, offensively and defensively. He put the tape on, um, you know, really impressed with the, the job Jeff Brown's done um, in his short time there at uh, Louisville. Uh, he's got a talented team, brought in a lot of transfers, and, uh, you know, really in all three phases, they do a nice job. So our guys have had a really good week of practice, uh, preparing for really all three phases. And, uh, you know, I think the thing I love about football is you get another opportunity. You know, whatever it is, you get another opportunity to, to go out and show who you are and what you're, you know, you're going to do. So, um, questions? What have you seen from Christian in terms of him leading the team for the first time this week? You know, man, it's hard to say, you know, what do you see in practice every day? I mean, they're trying to get the install. Hey, what are we doing new? What's the formations? And, uh, um, you know, you know, I think, you know, a young quarterback, that, you know, is still learning, needs to just, first of all, not worry about leading. I think he needs to worry about just doing his job to the best of his ability. And I think that's kind of what he's done this week. Uh, I think it'd be a lot to say, hey, you, you know, you're in charge of the offense. You better lead them. It's, you know, it's all on your shoulders, I think. Um, and I haven't said that to him, but you know that's what I would say if he asked me. Um, I just, he just needs to go play his game and play like he's you know like he's practiced and he's had a really good week of practice. I'm excited to watch it. Um, I'm sure you guys are too. I'm excited to see what we have, and I think the only time you really find you're not going to find out on Tuesday and Wednesday. You're going to find out on game day. So we'll find out on game day. Last week, you and us together. Last year after Nate's first. Uh, start. You talked about how you were kind of like really happy with how everyone else kind of stepped things up to, mm -hmm. to help him. Mm -hmm. um, do you get a sense that they're doing that again this week in practice? That guys are kind of taking it upon themselves to do a little bit more, knowing that they got a guy making his first career start. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. It's again, it's hard to tell if that's the case. Uh, you know, we'll find out on game day when they, you know, if I come into the presser afterwards and say, man, everybody else stepped up. Man, we had good protection. We did this. We did that. Like, you know, if we're, we're running the football, I mean. If, if you can't run the football, it's, it's, it's always like, it's going to be a long day for everybody. You know, uh, we need to make it a long day for them where they've got to throw it and make them one dimensional. So we've got to be able to run the ball. So we'll find out after the game if they stepped up or not. But uh, I would hope so. But I would hope so last week, or I would hope so. You know, so we can hope and hope and hope and wish. Uh, we're going to find out. Uh, you know how we execute. It comes down to execution, guys. Is there a tendency to simplify the game plan, maybe? Um, not really. I mean, if, if Christian was maybe on the scout field for the last three weeks, I mean, we did a little bit of that with maybe Nate, you know, at Western because he was on the scout field, you know, mm -hmm. reading off of cards. And I, I think going into Tuesday practice, you know, uh, that week, I mean, I think he was like the third string quarterback, you know, I think it was Derek, who else was there? It was, I felt like there was like a three man race at that time. And on Tuesday before practice even started, I was like, Nate Arnell's going to be the guy. I just knew it. And, you know, so maybe we, you know, simplified it a little bit, but there's no reason to simplify it. Uh, we can do just as much or more with Christian. He's really smart and um, and he, he understands football. Christian seems like a pretty even killed kid when we talked to him yesterday. Have you sensed any kind of nerves or anything before this big one? No, no, um, but it's not Saturday yet, right? You know, again, he will be nervous. And we talk about, you know, pressure and, and all those things and anxiety and all that. And, uh, you know, when you're prepared, you know, you're gonna, you're always gonna have nerves, but it's good nerves if you're prepared, and he's prepared right now. So I think he feels good with the game plan. He's about to play his game. These guys often talk about they prepare like they're the starter. That you know, even yeah. if they're gonna be, it's human nature. Like particularly the quarterback, you know, you're not the starter. Absolutely. So there's gonna be a little bit. Or do, have you seen? Have you picked up on anything this week? Just see, him? I see more reps, reps, Chris. I mean, you're you're exactly right. Everybody can, you know, they can say they're preparing like a starter until the time time comes, and they're like, holy, yeah, I wish I would have watched a little bit more tape. I wish I would have done that. You know. <laughs> Uh, being the backup is being the backup, whether it's in the NFL, college football, or peewee football. Uh, but when you know you're the guy, I think you prepare a little bit different. Uh, you hope and you know wish that they wouldn't prepare any different, but they do um, because you're thinking, hey, he's not gonna, you know, he ain't gonna get hurt. He's gonna be in there, and and uh, you know. But I think you know having that preparation um, will will certainly help him. On the note of preparation, does does the forecast Saturday go into the mix here when you're considering, you know, new quarterback, bad weather? Does that go into the game plan at all? You know, I sure hope not. Um, you know, we're not, you know, we, we don't coach like that. Um, you know, advantage pit. Uh, we play on grass every day. This grass out here is wet. As you guys walk out there on a Tuesday, it's always sloppy out there, muddy. Um, you know, we're mudders and uh, we don't play on field turf. So, uh, advantage pit. Well, Let's we, hope. We've heard a lot about getting back to the bases this week. Offensive line focusing on running off the ball. Defensive defense working on tackling. How have you seen your team respond to the challenge of getting back to those fundamentals? You know what? You know, I, I don't know where you got that. Did I tell you fundamentals? Or was that? Well, it was just talking to the players and coaches this okay. week. Uh, just yeah. when, after, during the bye. I right? mean, every week, every week, you know, or the bye week, I mean, you're, you know, because you're not preparing for anybody. You know, we had 
Last uh, Wednesday, we had one team period on Louisville. And then on Thursday, we had three team periods on Louisville. Today, you know, on a normal Tuesday, Thursday, we have probably five periods on Louisville. So, um, so you have more time to get into the basics. But, you know, we, we talk basics every day. I mean, we're tackling every day. I think the best tackling drill for a defense is how you practice in those team periods. You know, are you going to let the running back run right through you, run by you, or are you going to thud them up? Sometimes if you got guys banged up and got a shoulder and he's got a yellow shirt on or something like that, we don't, you know, hey, just get there. We'll finish it later on. Uh, and you play it like that. But to me, the best tackle drill is to, is to thud that stuff up during, you know, during team periods. And the same thing, I mean, on offense, making people miss on the, on the, on the rocks. So, um, you know, fundamentals are focused every single day. I mean, we, we never get away from our fundamentals. And every one of our individual, we've got at least 21 minutes a day of individual, you know, some type of what we call ABCs. Uh, on our schedule that we're working on stuff that we need for this game or, you know, whatever the need is. And, um, you know, I even talked to our Eagles the other day about, hey, you know, okay, D-line, you know, David Green, what do we need? Quarterbacks, what do we need? Ask every position, hey, what do you need? And we'll put it in practice. Tell me what you feel like we need. Um, so we're always, you know, it's like uh, sometimes what the coaches think you need and what the players think you need is different. You know, if the players think, hey, I need this or I need that, then we try to give it to them. What does the offensive line feel like they need? Um, just, you know, protection. You know, I mean, I think, you know, they didn't talk about the run blocking, but they talked about protection, so, um, which is, you know, pretty pretty accurate. But you, you can always get better run blocks. So we're working on it. But, you know, Coach Borb can hear, protect. hey, they said they want protection. Okay, we'll get you a little more of that, but you're going to get this, you know. And they asked to get the rocks down for an extra period down there just to get the D-line, you know, more speed than working against each other. So just little stuff like that. If that's what you want, we get That's easy. That's, you know, Coach's dream. What, what else, I mean, what other feedback did you get from the players, not just the O-line, but other positions of what they – yeah, you know, I'm not going to get into it. Yeah, but you know, I've got it written down, Chris. I mean, but uh, I mean, it's just fundamental stuff. It's nothing, you know, it's nothing secretive. It's just, you know, um, every every position. It's and it's common sense stuff that you're like, okay, we're going to give that to you anyway. We already know, but it's good to hear you say it. What do you think is the biggest reason for Louisville's <clears throat> surge under Bronx so soon? Um, I'll let you know Saturday after the game. <laughs> um, you can. I will tell you, ask me that question after the game, I'll tell you. Um, you know, um, they're a good football team. They got talent. I mean, you got, a, you know, a veteran quarterback that, you know, that uh, he's he's worked with before. He's making good decisions. You know, things have just gone well for him. They got a tailback that's explosive. Um, if you put on their explosive plays, if I put them up on the screen for you here in explosive plays, you'd be like, wow. And the dude gives him a crack and he'll take it. Throw him a T-screen, he's going 70. I mean, there's little things. Like when you got a guy that can do that, you guys saw what Izzy was last year. Are we a whole bunch different offensively than what we are last year? You know, Izzy, you know, you look at, you know, you look at like who your, you know, your MVP was a year later, you kind of go look back and you go, man, who do you miss? Like I miss that speed. I miss that pop through the line of scrimmage go. Okay, and I haven't seen that yet. I mean, I saw Sebo go down on the T-screen last week, um, but you, you, you kind of miss that. Speaking of uh, Jawar Jordan, um, he's coming in, he averages seven and a half yards per carry. Uh, how much more of a challenge is it for your defense to defend against a guy like that you've said is explosive, especially coming off a game against Virginia Tech where you missed, I think it was like 25, 26 tackles. Did you count them up? Yes. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Um, you know, I don't know how many were on tailbacks. You know, a whole lot different, you know. Um, again, I, I talk about that big, you know, that Drones kid was a big dude, and we missed tackles on him in the backfield. Uh, and again, I think the biggest difference is we're going to hopefully just in the, in the run game, I think. Plummer will have some, you know, they run a little bit of option at times, you know, um, but we'll see if they like option against us. Um, it's a little speed option. It's just a way to get him the ball in space on the edge. Um, but we're defending 10 guys as opposed to, you know, we got to defend 11 in the passing game. But in the run game, we're facing 10 this week, I hope. Um, but um, matter of fact, I, you know, I actually don't hope. I hope it's 11. If they want to run it with them, you know, we're fine with that. I, I don't know if he's like the drones kid running the ball. Uh, but we know he can throw the ball really, really well. On the note of explosiveness, is it is it fair to say this is probably the fastest team that you've faced this year just across the board? You look at what they have in the secondary and skill. Yeah, I mean, they play fast. I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to see it just on tape, but uh, I mean, North Carolina's pretty fast. Um, so um, I wouldn't say that they're faster than North Carolina, but, you know, you don't know until you, you see it live. Is your problem with Indian run defense more physical than mental or more mental than physical? Uh, that's a great question, Terry. You know, we talk about mental, physical, and structural. I would say it's physical. You know, we physically have missed tackles, whatever it may be. And again, I'll go back. Uh, 50, 59 rushes a, a week, you know, a week ago at Virginia Tech, defending 11 guys, and we averaged three point. They averaged 3.4 yards per carry, correct? 
that's not terrible, okay? Again, I felt like it was 12.5 per carry. That's how I felt on the sideline. That's why I said sometimes you gotta watch the tape to see exactly what it was. It was like, you know, you know, we bled, but we didn't bleed out, you know? And uh, we're used to, you know, stuff in the run and, um, and we, you know, we haven't done it this year, but again, you know, MVP on defense. I mean, you know, you look at Deslin Alexander, some of those guys we lost at the defensive end spot were critical. Um, so, you know, you're, you're, you know, you got new guys out there that you thought were ready as a pre you know, season started and, and maybe not as good as we thought they were going to be. Tim Lincoln, that, that physicality being back in you guys' this game, you were winning, winning against the run like that, can that be the key to unlock you guys playing faster again and maybe you know, being more aggressive to create the turnovers that you guys were creating last no year? No doubt about it. I mean, like I said, if, if, if they can be two dimensional, which you know, Virginia Tech was kind of when you think about the you know three big passes they had, and then they're able to just you know run the ball and stay in front of the sticks as, as opposed to when you're behind the sticks, you know it's easier to play defense. But when you're you know when they're in front of the sticks and it's you know second down and, and four, like that's you know like what are they going to do here? They can take a shot. They can they can do whatever they want. So you know our dominance in the run game in the past has helped us, and, and we've got to get back to that. But again, these some of these you know West Virginia, I mean they, they were built to run it. You know with you know, uh, 11 guys, and so is Virginia Tech. So it comes down to, you know, who you're playing against. And we played against better, really, when you think about Drake May and what we gave up that day. We played pretty good against him compared to what he's put up on. I mean, look what yards he put up last week. I mean, you, you think about just the defensive performance. we got to get him off the field. And again, when you're on the field for 40 minutes, that's the other thing. I mean, what, 38 and a half, 39 minutes on the field, you're going to give up more yards, period. If you're the more plays you're on the field, the more yards you're going to give up. So scoring and keeping our defense off the field is critical, too. Bam Green was the starter defensive end this week. Um, have you seen on his growth so far this week? Who did you say, Bam? Yeah. Um, yeah, Bam. Bam is you know um, has, has been you know a pleasant surprise. I would say he's been physical, um, and um, you know there's little mistakes he makes during the games that you know that the normal eye would not catch. But we know what he was supposed to do, whether it's spill or not spill, some of those things. But uh, I've been happy with where Bam is. Uh, we'll just keep getting better. On the, final? Yeah, on the other end of that line, I mean, I'm sure you were hoping for more than two sacks in five games from day on. It seems like he's getting into the backfield. I mean, obviously, you know, the last game he had a, you know, missed a number of tackles. I mean, do you feel like he's close, though, to having one of those games where you get a couple sacks where he starts sort of breaking out a little bit? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Dayon's, again, it's called finish the play, right? And Dayon knows it. And, he, you know, there's nobody who feels worse than him about not finishing some of those plays. And, um, he's had opportunities, and if, you know, big thing as coaches is our job is to put him in position to make plays, and then after that, you know, you got to finish it. And, and Dayon will get better. I mean, it's it's his first year starting too. I mean, it's his first start. He's had, you know, some guys in front of him the last couple of years, so it's, this is his opportunity to shine, and uh, he'll get better as the year goes on. Still a lot of football to be played. Okay. You good? Uh, yeah, uh, I was kind of curious about the the, the blue vase down there. Um, that's brand new. I just brought it in the building this week. Yeah. <laughs> that, that blue vase has been there every day. Yeah. It's been there all the time. So, uh, yeah, blue vase.